Check this out. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ. Charlie. That right. This one's going to get a little nerdy, guys. Just a warning. So I released a new version earlier this week, and it had a few things in it, and one of the things was supposed to be a fix for the latency that was building up and the memory overflow issues with the deferred procedure calls. I was pretty sure I had this fix, but it turns out that after a couple hours, the issue still shows up. The good news is I finally did track down exactly where the issue was and I do have a fix for it now after testing it over several hours. The bad news is because of some other work that I've been doing in the software, the version is a little too broken to release right now. I've almost finished the plugin wrappers which are designed to make plugin enabling, deleting, and just recognition, uh, updating, stuff like that a lot easier and uh, should give you guys more control over what features are running an input mapper. The problem is the settings around this kind of broke the settings uh, generic UI that I've been using throughout the entire application. Um, a lot of things weren't lining up properly and every time I tried to create some sort of a hack to make it look correct in one spot it would break it in another spot so I'm actually gonna have to go in and redo some of the settings UI uh, which is why I haven't been able to release the DPC fix yet so uh, as soon as I get that fixed I'm gonna release a version which has this new settings uh, for the plugins and all that stuff um, along with this fix for the DPC and then I'm going to start jumping into some more technical stuff. One of the more interesting changes is coming that I've already started testing out and has some promise is I'm going to be breaking away from the set in stone uh, parameters that macros and uh, commands and triggers and all that stuff use for developers and make it more dynamic so if you create a macro or a trigger or anything like that, you can have it use any kind of parameters you want. And what Input Mapper will do is through reflection, it'll actually see what kind of parameters it expects and plug those in automatically when it calls that trigger or action uh, to execute. And what this means is that uh, previously, you know, the macro could either be the device state aware or it might be aware of uh, like the actual device itself but there wasn't too much capability beyond that um, but now developers creating these triggers and commands can add the ability for the plugin or whatever to be aware of any part of the application simply by adding the parameter to the calling statement of that action or trigger and what that's going to do is going to open up a lot of functionality and make it so triggers and ash can, actions can interact with the program in a lot more ways, um, be a lot smarter, uh, not rely on so many uh, external reflection calls, and hopefully speed the whole thing up. I've done some limited testing of this, and it seems to be working good so far, uh, but I haven't really tested it in depth yet. Uh, nor have I figured out UI-wise how I'm going to convey this across to the user. Because on top of being able to accept, you know, parameters from the application itself, it should also be able to accept additional user parameters. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to have a rapid-fire action uh, as part of a macro, uh, maybe you want to vary maybe you want to have the speed that that rapid fire happens variable depending on some other uh, condition or input or something like that so the way to map that variable speed to not only the trigger that's causing the action to commit to begin with but to also map 
that additional channel in there uh, it's gonna it's gonna make the UI a little more tricky so uh, but that's fine because I was planning on redoing the macro UI anyways so uh, that's just stuff that I'm gonna have to take into consideration when I do that so those are probably the two biggest things going on uh, this coming week for input mapper modifying the settings UI and beginning work on rewriting the macros um, a lot of people aren't really aware macros already exist in input mapper 1.7 but the ui is so poor that it's confusing to people even though the macros in 1.7 are far more advanced than anything uh, that i've had previously as a matter of fact people aren't even aware but 1.7 you can actually write your own c sharp code right in the application itself and have it execute as part of a macro action so couple that with the ability to add whatever parameters uh, to actions that you want and you'll be able to feed custom information into that C sharp code and ma manipulate it in any way you want so that, that that'll be pretty cool um, like I said the UI is really the hardest part of all of this so hopefully I can figure out a nice clean way um, that's not too uh, it doesn't require too much hand holding or you know tutorials for people to figure out but is more intuitive uh, so that's about it um, I'll try to have the new version which fixes that DPC bug out within the next few days if I can get the settings UI fixed because uh, that's really the main thing holding it up alright guys have a good one